May we stand to receive the family, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear, the Lord is the strength of my life, whom shall I be afraid. I am the resurrection and the life. For I go to prepare a place for you. And it reaches to me. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. You are my home. And receive you unto myself. is the Lord's in the power of and the fullness thereof you lift me up the world and they that dwell therein lift me up for he hath founded upon it the seas and established it upon the floods shall ascend into the hill of the Lord you lift me up or who shall stand in his holy temple in the of your name. he hath in the power clean hands pure heart you lift me up. who hath not lifted upon his soul unto vanity you lift me up. nor sworn Deceitfully. You are my love. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide love like no under the shadow and it reaches of the Almighty. Me. You are my peace. I will say unto the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. And it reaches me. Surely he shall deliver. Yes, he shall deliver. We say good night here. You lift me up. Good night over here. In the of your grace. Tuck them in. And in the very power of your name. Rest well. Sleep lift well. Me up. See you in the morning. You lift in the morning. Good night over here. You are my strength. Rest well. Strength like no other. He is our strength. Strength like no other. And we reach us. And it reaches to me. Yes, 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 yes. You are my. You are my let the God be your strength today. He is our strength. Yes, he is. Family, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up. 
it can reach to you. It can go right to your heart. And it reaches to me. The strength of the Lord will be your strength today. Reaches to me. The strength of the Lord will be your strength. Reaches to me. Lord bless you today. You may be seated. Today we have gathered this moment to re remember and reflect upon the life of that of Bruce Ori and the family along with the professional staff of the Myers Mortuary Service have provided today an outline for us to follow. Before we enter into this worship service, if you can help us make sure that this moment is without distractions. If you can check your mobile devices to make sure that it is on silent or on vibrate. We want the family to be comforted without distractions today. As each person come to the podium, allow me opportunity to change out the mic so therefore we can operate with a level of safety and to sanitize the mic in between each person. Each remark, each reading will be shared from this podium. Opening song from Ms. Jones and after that will be Old Testament, Shamika Huff, New Testament, Kiyosha Ori, and I will come back with word of prayer and after which Mr. McQueen will give us song of celebration, Ms. Jones.
today I'll read from you from the Old Testament, Job chapter 19, verse 25. But for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and at last he will stand up upon the earth. And after my skin, even this body is destroyed, then without my flesh, I shall see God, whom I, even I, shall see on my side. And my eyes shall behold, not as a stranger. My heart is consumed within me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. from Matthew 11 and 28, the New International Version, King James New International Version. And the word reads, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thank you. Shall we pray? By and by, when the morning come, and when all the saints of God have gathered home, we will tell the story of how we overcome, and we will understand it better by and by. Fathers, in the name of Jesus, we come before the throne of grace, humble but yet boldly, today. And God, before we ask you for anything, we thank you for everything. Thank you for this moment that you knew about before the foundation of the world. Thank you for the years and the memories and times that this family have had with their loved ones. Thank you for the conversations, the time of laughter, the time of joy, the time of tears, the time of visitations. We thank you for those moments that this family has had with their loved one. Because in just a few days from now, they would need those moments to help them through the moments of tears, through the moments of bereavement. God, we thank you for your son Jesus for dying on Calvary's cross for us. For without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sin. We thank you because if we have received you, then we will forever be with you. And God, I pray that in this moment that you wrap your arms around this family. And let them know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. And God, and when the phone calls have ceased, the visitations are no more. Will you remind them that you said in your word that I'll never leave you. Neither will I forsake you. And God, you are the God that can wipe and will wipe all tears from our eyes. And God, when you do these things, we won't take any credit, but we'll say to God be the glory for the great things that you have done. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Let's be comforted with a song from Brother McQueen. to you you reign 
sitting on the throne For you are God and God alone Because of you my cloudy days are gone I can sing to you this song I just want to say that I love you more than I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Oh, I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Oh, 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 I love you, Jesus. Oh, I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. sweet to know that Jesus loves you. Oh, what a words of comfort. Thank you to our psalmist for leading us in that moment of worship. Two minutes have been asked for reflections and remarks. Miss Juanita Frederick will come, after which Miss Kiyosha Ori will come again with remarks. Let's receive them at this moment. Thank you. I am Juanita. 
known to our family as Nini. Bruce was my second cousin. When Bruce moved back home to Columbia, I got to really hang out with him. When I would come home to visit, I would go and chill with Bruce, his sister Geraldine, and his mother, Aunt Louise. Bruce would give me the most recent update on Aunt Louise since my last call. Bruce was an attentive son and a regular old brother that sometimes liked to tease his sister. Bruce would ask me how life was going for me and he would always stress safety while I traveled between South Carolina and New Jersey. He shared with me his experience briefly living in uh, New Jersey, in Patterson, New Jersey with his dad as a little boy, which I never knew. He had me cracking up at that story. He was a man that could tell a story and he topped his story off with that big Ori laugh. When Bruce moved into the nursing home, we continued to hang. I would take him a home cooked meal that I did not make, which he raved about. He loved when he saw home cooked food come in the door. Bruce would ensure he said thank you. And his thank you was always big and warm. We would watch TV, we would talk about talk shows, different TV series, actors and commercials. These were the days that I discovered Bruce loved commercials. There was a little baby that he thought looked like me and he said, that baby reminds me of you. And he would always mention a movie and he would say, you could have played that role. I think Bruce could have been a great casting director. He would talk about his childhood in Columbia, what activity he might have done that day, and tell me what was on the menu for the day. And he did his normal, asked how my life was going, how long I was staying home this time, and he wished me safe travels. In the past few months, I wasn't able to go into the nursing home due to the lockdown, but he and I checked in with each other. A few weeks ago, I dropped off dinner with pork chops, and he called later and he said, those pork chops were good. They were seasoned well. Thank you. I was in a virtual play and Bruce was in the audience. The day after, Bruce called me and said, I watched the play and it was good. It was too short. I think y'all should do a serious play. Y'all could play them for nursing homes. They have the equipment. I thanked Bruce for his support and laughed and I told Bruce that the writer told another audience that there should be more virtual plays for people that are unable to go to the theater. I told him I would give the writer his notes, and I did. She was happy to take Bruce's notes, and she smiled about how they agreed that there should be more virtual plays. Now I felt Bruce could have been a producer and a casting director. I called Bruce while he was most recently in the hospital. On that day, his voice was clear, and he was not congested. I'm thankful that we had that conversation. This past Sunday, it just so happened that I was in the middle of telling my family about the advice Bruce gave me just a few weeks ago. And that's when the phone rang, saying he transitioned. That coincidence of talking about Bruce and the phone ringing gave me a piece that Bruce is resting and is now one of my angels. Today I am saying a loving thank you to Bruce for being the supportive, concerned, and loving cousin that he was to me, and we have all now gained an angel. Thank you. I don't have any remarks. Uh, I'm just gonna sing and then I'm gonna let the program go on. And I am Bruce's youngest daughter, Leandra. I am the baby. Uh, I used to come down here frequently to see him, and he always called me to check on me to make sure I was all right, even though I should have been checking on him more than he was checking on me. So I'm just going to bless you with this song real quick. One of these mornings, soon one morning, I'm gonna lay down my cross, get me a crown. Soon one evening, late in the evening, I'm going home. Soon as my feet strike Zion, I'm gonna lay down my 
heavy burden Put on my robe in glory I'm going home hills and mountains I'm gonna drink from the Christian fountain You know all of God's sons and daughters that morning will drink that old healing water and we're gonna live on on forever We're gonna live on on forever We're gonna live on pleasure of knowing Mr. Ori by Miss Martha Ori, which is actually my grandmother-in-law. Um, we would, I would ride in the car with Mr. Ori when she would take Bruce back and forth to his eye appointments before he had a stroke. And uh, we always stopped by Arby's. So if we know about Bruce and we know about Bruce eating. He loved his Arby's and fast food. Um, Miss Ori made sure that um, Bruce had the right care in his last days and that he had the right care in the last three years. Um, we went from being, he went from being independent, taking care of his mom and helping his sister to being, having a stroke. When Bruce had his stroke, um, I saw a lot of trials come his way and that he overcame. Bruce was able to walk. Bruce started moving his arms. He was able to feed himself. Um, I had the pleasure with Mr. Reed when he moved into an apartment from rehab. We got him an apartment and um, he lived in between me and Mr. Reed in, a, in this apartment complex and my husband Dexter. And we went down there every day, every single day. We went down there. He walked, he fed himself, he started learning how to put food in the microwave. Um, it was amazing. I thank God for his grace because Bruce said he was so grateful in the video, of any, when, if, if anyone's seen the video, he would put a video on Facebook. He said, I want to put a video, I want to put a video. And we was like, okay, okay. He, he was his first steps. 
He said, I'm so grateful and thankful to God that for, for whatever I have right now, I'm grateful and I'm thankful for that. And we didn't realize then what he was saying, but we thank God for his life. And we thank God that he overcame so much with his stroke and so much difficulties in his body. Every doctor's appointment, he pushed through it. He smiled, he laughed, he joked all the time. It was never a dull moment. Every year he was in a nursing home, we were so glad to get him out. And so we made sure every year he was in a nursing home, we got him out of the nursing home, every year. We took him to see the Christmas lights. You know, he loved to go places. We took him to the Greek festival. He loved everything Columbia had to offer from Detroit. And we thank God for him and for his life. And I, I believe that God's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant, because he knew the Lord. He listened to God. He listened to gospel music. He read the word, the daily bread. He even let the Jehovah Witnesses in and everybody who came to talk to him about the Lord. And we was like, okay, Bruce, okay. So we thank God for Bruce, and we thank God for all you coming out, and thank you. You're the daughter. You sound churchy in here. <laughs> and because of that, this is a worship service. I believe it's appropriate that we give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Uh, I say let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's worthy to be praised. To all participants and to those who have shared reflections to our music, and musicians, God is good. Even on a bad day, he is still a good God. I say that on a bad day, he is still a good God. I would not attempt to be personal today as I'm not personally acquainted with your dear loved one, but uh, by my observations of reading uh, the obituary and to hear uh, brief remarks, my attention for about eight minutes uh, will it was captured from Luke chapter 5 my mind went to as I was reading and hearing today in Luke chapter 5 the gospel of Luke chapter 5 is talking about an encounter that uh, this fisherman by the name of Peter and by my reading the obituary and seeing the picture there's this big fish that is right beside him so apparently he's like fishing and of course your obituary said that he didn't mind sharing stories about fishing. So I want to talk for a few minutes about gone fishing, the audacity to try again. Gone fishing, the audacity to try again. Peter was a professional fisherman. He was not a novice. He was not unlearned. He was not immature. He knew when to fish. He knew where to fish. He knew the climate. Now, I'm from uh, the PD area of South Carolina, and uh, nothing about me says outdoors. I like stuff indoors. I have nothing about me. Uh, but they told me now, you could tell me if I'm wrong, that uh, the good time when the fish are biting and when it's about to rain. And that means that that person know what they're talking about when, when it's fishing. He knew, Peter knew what uh, of course, the fishing of that day was a little different than today, but to bring it relevant to now, uh, the professional fisherman knows what bait to put on the hook. Uh, they know uh, the current of the waters, the ripples of the waves, to know where to drop their line. But in this particular encounter in Luke chapter 5, as professional as Peter is in his particular contemporary, he had a stump that night there was no success and no matter how professional he was no matter how uh, a veteran he was this particular time he caught nothing can i tell you family i know that we all have tried to do our best and will do our best but sometimes we miss the mark I know that oftentimes we have, have our education and we have saved money, but life has a way of happening. Is there anybody who has had life just happen to you? You planned for one thing and something, but you didn't plan for that. You, 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 got, uh, you got your car fixed and then after the car got fixed, one of the kids got sick. 
And after the kids got sick, the refrigerator went bad. After a while, things called life just happens. And that's, that's what happened to Peter that night. He had, he had his guys with him, and, and, and they caught nothing, no matter how trained they were, no matter how many loved ones you had to say bye before, how many family reunions, how many grandmothers or aunties and uncles, I don't care how sick a person was, when the time of death come, you were still not ready. I don't care if the doctor said, get all the family around, they had only, they're not going to make it through the night, but when that moment come, you're still not ready. Peter, Peter did not catch anything that night. So they came on the shore in Luke chapter 5, and they were washing their nets. Now, it's kind of interesting. If, if, uh, if they didn't catch anything, why were they watching, washing their nets? It's kind of oxymoronic to me that uh, if the scripture said that they didn't catch anything, and when they got to the shore, they washed their nets, why were they washing their nets if they didn't catch anything? Well, this is my, uh, uh, my illustration of that. I don't think that uh, they was washing their nets because they didn't catch anything. They were washing their nets because what they caught was what they were not there to catch. You know, when you have a net and you throw a net out, uh, they went there to catch fish. But I believe as they drew the net in, they picked up some trash. As they drew the net in, they picked up some shells. As they drew the net in, they picked up some baggages from the past. Is there anybody in here that you cast your net and when you brought it in, you picked up some things that you did not plan to catch? So all of us, as we come now to the end of this year, we might need to wash our nets. We might need to wash our nets from some Facebook friends. We might need to wash our nets by deleting some people out of our cell phone. We might need to wash our nets by not inviting some people to the cookout. Wow. Wow. Because sometimes you'll catch some things that you didn't plan for. And there's a man by the name of Jesus. Jesus walks up on them washing their nets. And when them washing their nets mean that I am finished... I am not doing nothing else. I've been out here all night, and I'm not going to do another hour of this. Is there anybody that can say, and you woke up one morning and say, I'm not going to take this no more. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm going to get in the car, and I'm going to drive it to the gas run out. I'm not, I'm, I got my bags packed. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to leave the job. But I want to tell you that Jesus has walked upon your life. While you are washing your net, while you are saying that I'm done, I'm, I'm finished, I'm not fishing no more. And Jesus said, can y'all do me a favor? Can I borrow your ship for a moment? And I can see now, I, I think, I think, you know, I often tell uh, the little church I pastor, when you're reading the Bible, uh, read it with a vision. I believe you, uh, you share that you are, do plays and uh, dramatize the scripture. Because the, the, if, if you think that, uh, if you think that the modern day TV series, is, series are X-rated, just read the Bible. You know, the, the Bible is really a, a, a crime movie. A, a comical book. It, is, it has all of that in there. I, I believe that Peter was an African American. <laughs> Working all night. Now you're asking me to use my ship to go out a little further so you can preach a long message. Can you imagine as tired as Peter was? As worn as he was? As disappointed as Peter was? But when Jesus asked of him, he said, I don't mind allowing Jesus to use my boat. I know 2020 has been rough. I'm almost done. I know 2020 has been tough, but I want you to have a little strength for Jesus and say, Lord, you can use my life. I know you have tears and you've had disappointment, but Jesus can use my life. Jesus, he goes on the ship and he teaches and preaches. And after he has finished preaching, he turns to Peter he turns to this disappointed Peter. He turns to this tired Peter. And Jesus remembered his love. Jesus remembered his gift. And I want to thank God that although your family may forget about some things, God won't forget you. Some people you have squeezed money into their hands. And then when they got up on the up and up, they forgot you. But I want to tell you that Jesus won't forget your sacrifice. Because Jesus turned to Peter and said, sir, I know. You have been tolling all night, but I want you to do me a favor. Just try again. 
And family, that's why I come to tell you today, I'm not going to say that if Bruce was here, because he's not here. But I want to tell some family today that you have resolved in your mind, I'm not going to do it again. I'm going to close up the business. I'm not going to try it. I'm not going to do. I'm not going to sing another song. I'm not going to do another play. I'm not going to I'm not going to cook another cake. I'm not going to fish again. But I want to tell you to have the audacity to try again. Because if you try again, this time it's going to work. And the Bible said Cast your net out and throw it back into the water. Throw it back into the same place that you tried the last time. God, why can't I go across town? Why I can't go to L.A.? Why I can't go to Atlanta? Why I can't go to D.C.? Because the God of Atlanta is the God of South Carolina. The God of the mountain is the God of the valley. The God of joy is the God of sorrow. And he cast his net and the bible said and a draught of fishes now that's not good english because it should have said a draught of fish but if you look in luke chapter 5 it said a draught of fishes that's good in country right there fishes well well why did it say fishes because it wasn't talking about just a quantity of fishes it was talking about different types of fish bass croaker salmon and i want to tell you god's got a way that is mighty sweet he'll bless you more than one way he'll bless you more than two ways and i believe i got about two people in here that know that god can bless you from the north the south the east and the west but all you got to do is try again daughters family grandkids try again love again watch this forgive again hope again i leave you with this story a man by the name of horatio spatford this is a true story he was a successful chicago business owner he owned many real estate one morning he of course he was married with a beautiful wife and three daughters and a son and he was a successful chicago business owner one morning he goes into the room to wake up his son, and his son is not alive. His son dies in his sleep. He has to bury his son. It is the children who should bury the father, not the father burying the son. A few years later, or maybe two years later, the Chicago fires, the 1800 Chicago fires, burned up all of his real estate. After trying to cope with that, he told his wife and his daughters that they were going to move across seas. He put his three daughters and his wife on a ship to go ahead of him, and he was going to take care of some business back in America. He received a telegram a few days later that saying that there was a shipwreck, and the only person that survived of his family was his wife. Yes, so now in two-year time span, he lost his son yes, and his three daughters. So my brothers and sisters, he gets on the next ship, and he's going to meet his wife, he gets to a certain place and the captain of the ship comes to his room and says, sir, this is where the ship went down. Do you want to come and have a little ceremony? Horatio Spafford goes to the bow of the ship, looks down in the water, tears in his eyes. He goes back to his room, picks up a pen and a piece of paper, and he writes these words. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like seas billows rose whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul father in jesus name i thank you for your love your kindness your tender mercy i pray that something was said to comfort this family today as they say their goodbyes over here there is another crowd that's saying hello on the other side where the wicked have ceased from troubling and the weary is at rest. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll be in the hands of the professional staff of Myers Mortuary Services. Just a few observations as we are processing to Woodlawn Cemetery. If you can cut on your flashers and your low beams and follow as closely as possible as we are crossing intersections we're going to ask you to look to your left and your right still so therefore we all may arrive safely at the woodlawn cemetery 
10 215 Farrell Road, Blythewood, South Carolina. We're in the hands of the staff of Mortuary, Myers Mortuary. After the singing of this precious dear heart, Miss Shayla Jones, we will be in the hands of the staff. I don't 